Uno, dos y tres. ¡Cuatro! Oh. Hola, ¿qué tal? Es Texas Rewind con Billy Luchi ahí a la izquierda y David Nuño aquí. ¿Cómo estás, señor? Sí, sí. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm not good at Spanish. I'm not good at Italian. I'm, I don't speak another language. I wish that I could. I wish if I would have done it differently, I wish I could speak four languages. I think it is a very cool, uh, it is a very, really cool uh, attribute for someone. Uh, talent almost if they can speak multiple languages. I always used to think that about Kobe Bryant when they say speak four or five yeah. languages. I just it's it it's impressive. It is impressive. It's really impressive. And you know, when we were younger, we could have learned those. Now it's probably a little too late. Well, unless you go to the bathroom at like uh, Carabas and they're teaching you Italian while you pee in there. So on the show, we had to talk a little bit about some reports ninety miles away. Does A and M want to you? Yeah, they want to play them. Yeah, I, I mean. They didn't want them because Texas needed the game more than they did. It, you were doing a favor to a, a re, an arch recruiting rival uh, when they were down and floundering. It was Jack Dawson floating around in the water in the Titanic. Don't reach out your hand. Or, I shouldn't even call them Jack Dawson. They're that jackass character that Billy Zane played <laughs> that was knocking. A, isn't it Texas that would knock over women and children? Yes on the way to the lifeboat and just shove people out of the way and Billy Zane. pull out a gun. Billy Zane, that's exactly Texas in that movie. And why would you help Billy Zane? There's no reason to. No, Billy Zane, you let him drown. Yeah, you hope. But yeah, yeah. You let him drown. You yeah. don't stick out a hand. And that's what A&M was doing. Now, now that Texas is in the conference, and as soon as that happened, it's like, okay, yeah, we're renewing the rivalry. We're playing them every year. And the fight becomes who's going to get the first home game. And that's, I think that's about the only uh, – battle that you're going to wage on that front and it, what happened is this is just about a and m uh, and pod preference if they even go the pod route right. which i think i'm starting to get the vibe that they will yeah so by the way this is brought to you by t-mobile it is tech Sacks rewind and they want to remind you to visit t-mobile.com slash across america to learn how you can get value and coverage through t-mobile on the show we talked about that topic we talked about uh big shooter here with around aguiland he was here we had the baseball bunch breaking down the Mississippi State Series. And during the go hour, we talked about the cancellation of the UIW game. All that and more here on Texags Rewind. Big baseball series this week in OB. Yep. Yeah, they're all big. They're all big. When you're trying to host, and you're so close, I think. Close to host. Close to host. I don't know what the number is to be able to host, but if you read from the uh, our baseball bunch guys on their, around the horn, I think the number 18 wins in SEC play sounds like a safe number for them. They're sitting at right now 14 and 10, which would mean they would have to win two um, of series. three in the next two. Yeah, they need to win the next two series, obviously, but win at least two of three Yeah, in each of them. Well, that's how you win the series, two or yeah. three. Yeah. And I, Let's take a sweep, though. Yeah, absolutely. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get one yeah. or two. But uh, I do think uh, they're, they're going to win the two series. I mean, you never overlook an opponent. Uh, and in football, we know what it's like to play Ole Miss and Mississippi State when they're not very good. Uh, what year was that? 2018, maybe? Yeah. When A&M was fourth in the poll and That's then right. lost a bad Mississippi State and Ole Miss. But uh, A&M, uh, at least on paper, and I'm sure on the field, is better than both of those teams. I hope so. I, I they they got to win these games. Do you have a, much of an opinion on the cancellation of the ICW game? Well, no, I really don't. Um, I, don't I even thought that from listening to that, uh, that soundbite that Schlossnagel apologized too much. Look, there, there's a way a game is played, and I don't mean the game of ball. I mean the, the political game sure. of, of hosting and things like that. And if you have a game that by winning, it's detrimental to you. Why play a game, any game, at any sport, at anywhere, if the if victory actually hurts you? Why play it? Why play a game where if you win you lose? There's no reason to. And then people are saying, "Well, then why schedule it, man? Don't even schedule. Play the games on your schedule, bro." Well, I know places that have uh, uh, that have that have canceled games for various reasons. Really? Ob, can you give me an example of a of a high profile <laughs> school? I mean, maybe not just baseball, and maybe a football, yeah. for instance. Well, in I think it was 1999, 
because I was partying like it was. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was covering the Texas Longhorns for the Austin American Statesman. I'm very excited Do tell. about going to Hawaii yeah, yeah. for the season opener, you know, because at that time I'd never been to Hawaii. Right. There must have been an earthquake or something coming, no, right? No, actually, uh, Mac Brown canceled the game huh? uh, with Hawaii because he said, you know what? It's, it's just not what's best for our program. Wait a second. Mac Brown, the legendary coach mm, from Texas. Great guy. Great, great guy, guy, which I know you. He canceled a game yes. against a Hawaii school because it didn't do any good for his well, program. Well, he thought that uh, the way he explained it was, you know, oh. we have to travel all the way out there. kind of interrupts what we try to do weekly, and it's just not – in the best interest of our program to play it. So they bought out of that game. And I remember June Jones was in the coach in Hawaii, and he was upset, and he made a statement like, you know, I lived in Texas, and those people from Texas, they won't back down from anything. So so I'm surprised, he said. But, of course, that, that coach isn't from Texas, is he? Uh, so that was kind of, you know, good back and forth. But the bottom line was the Texas coach felt that, that that scheduled game that had been scheduled for a long time and people had actually bought tickets for it and plane tickets and all those things. And he came back a few months before the game. That was a few months, but still, it had been scheduled for a long time. And he said, now this is what's not best for our program, so we're going to cancel it. So this weekend, Mississippi State's playing for their postseason lives. Not, I'm not talking about the NCAA tournament. I'm talking about to get to Hoover. Yep. And when you start looking at the pieces of their roster and of their lineup, and I said this to, to Scotty before we started, kind of similar to me, the South Carolina, like the sum isn't matching the individual parts. They've got really good players. And they're the defending national champions. Six of their nine returned from off that team. And it just, for whatever reason, hasn't come together for them this, this year. Now, that is in no way, shape, or form a reason for AM to overlook this team, a and the way they're built, can't overlook anybody mm-hmm. with the questions they've got on the pitching staff. And a hungry dog runs faster. You know, Mississippi State is playing for their postseason lives. They're backed into a corner. You are going to get the best version, whatever that is, you're going to get the best version of Mississippi State this weekend. No question in my mind. Because they also have to play Godzilla next week, the Hills, Tennessee, at the end of the year. And they understand. I mean, there's a they look at their last six games and see what they have to do uh, you know, they've got to win more games than Kentucky does. They're, they're, they're playing against Kentucky in addition to playing against A&M to move on to the next level. So, I mean, they're, they're going to be focused. They're going to play as well as they can. South Carolina was playing better than Mississippi State when they came in last weekend. But the, 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 the postseason light that's blinking in the corner was blinking for both of them. And that's where A and M has to match intensity. Can't look by this. They they can't look by Ole Miss next week. They have got to play every game to end up wherever they go. Every single one of these games, their maximum effort is what it's going to take to win ball games. Even though the seasons didn't work out for Mississippi and Mississippi State like like they thought, it's still the fact of the matter is you have to play those games. Just like you played as tough as you did against at Georgia, as tough as you did against Arkansas, you've got to have that level. And I'm very confident that this team will, will match that level. Jim Schlossnagel's talked about it at different times that their mindset is to be desperate to win. And he talked about it yesterday being more desperate to win than the team in the other dugout. And like Scott said, like Bronny said, the two teams they're facing down the stretch are extremely talented. Six of nine returning position players are guys in the lineup from the last year's national championship winning team for Mississippi State. Ole Miss was a team that was ranked number one in the country earlier this year. Obviously, the season haven't gone their way, but the talent's there. And in this league, anybody can beat anybody on any given day. And it's like we talk about, Bronny, you just have to make sure you don't get swept, right? Because it is, it's hard. It's, the teams in this conference can sweep you even at your own place. Yeah, I think. Um... The weekend, I think, is going to come down to obviously AM starting pitching, but Mississippi State's. I, I, when I looked at their numbers last night, I'm going, how are they 25 and 24? You know, and I think Scotty mentioned you said it probably comes down to the pitching. Yes. But there's going to be guys that step into the batter's box. And I said this about South Carolina last week. South Carolina came in hitting 260 as a team, one of the bottom in the SEC. 
And by mid-game Sunday, they were hitting 350-something on the weekend. So this A&M staff, they're going to have to pitch better. We all know that. Um, but it can't be that kind of discrepancy. You won't win games if a team coming in hitting, what is Mississippi State hitting, 280? Yeah, and SEC games are hitting 274. So if they if they leave the weekend hitting 330, 340, you're, it's going to take some miraculous offensive game plans for A&M or some miraculous offensive outputs for A&M. Number 15, te- that's because number 15 Texas A&M pulled off an incredible comeback on the final round of the Franklin Regional, punching their ticket to their first NCAA championship appearance since 2015. A&M entered the day down six strokes. Zoe Slaughter shot a, shot a historic seven under. Jeannie Park finished eight under for the weekend. And a Duke golfer missed an eight-foot putt to send the Aggies through to Greyhawk. Uh, they'll play the NCAA championship in Scottsdale, Arizona, May 20th through the 25th and then also in women's golf news you had three all sec honorees blanca fernandez garcia poggio is a first team all sec selection adela chernesek was an all freshman team selection and brooke tyree all sec community service so congratulations to coach garrett chadwell and the entire team and we'll be watching them as they move forward man that was fun He's a winner. And like, uh, sometimes we talk about like Schloss being a huge hire, Buzz being a huge hire. He needs to be mentioned in that same conversation. Absolutely. He's been fantastic. It's, and it's only year one. Yeah. Only year one. Also in NCAA tournament news, how about women's tennis? Number seven, Texas A&M will take on Vanderbilt this weekend in the Super Regional Round. That will be held at the Mitchell Tennis Center right here in Aggieland. First serve, 2 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Let's go. It will also be streamed on the Tennis One app if you're unable to make it. The Ags are 2-0 and against Vanderbilt this season. I mean, they're 30. 30- Two and one, 13 and 0 in the SEC. They defeated the Commodore six to one back in March, and then four to two in the NCAA tournament just last month. So we'll be watching all things them and rooting for Mark Weaver and company as they hope to punch their ticket to the NCAA championships as well. Another guy that we can put on that list. Absolutely, love him. SEC Coach of the Year. Yes, sir. And and also works out hard. Oh, really? Oof. We see him. Uh, okay. Um, baseball news, number 10, Texas A&M will take on the defending cha- uh, national champion Mississippi State Bulldogs this weekend. Friday's game, first pitch is 6.30. Saturday is a 2 o'clock start. Sunday's a 12 noon start. Friday and Saturday, you'll have to stream those games on the SEC Network Plus. Sunday's game will be televised on the SEC Network. That game will all, uh, Sunday's game will also serve as the Aggie Senior Day. Softball's awaiting their NCAA uh, fate. They'll find that out 7 o'clock Central Time on Sunday on ESPN2 and then we'll be watching the NC the SEC excuse me outdoor track and field championships throughout the weekend I I could kind of tell in that writing and I think what he was led to believe was that Texas A&M was trying to not play Texas annually but when and when in the reality if there's anything to because I've, I've had discussions with people on the A&M side about, hey, what's what's going on? You know, as much as I can get in relation to the scheduling stuff. When Texas, A&M didn't want Texas in the SEC. We all know that. When they got when they got into the SEC and when it was done that them and OU were coming in, A&M's mindset was, okay, we're playing Texas every year. It doesn't hurt. It's, it's not a net positive for them to play us anymore where we're throwing them a life preserver. Now we're in the same league, and it was just kind of understood, yeah, we're going to be playing the Longhorns every year. I think where the, there, there's a little, uh, little break in the, in the chain of what's really accurate is if Texas A&M is sitting there saying, hey, if there's pods, we'd rather not be in with Texas OU Missouri, like the Big 12 pod. Our fans have no interest in that. That's not why we left for the SEC. You guys, Sankey, and kind of left us blindsided with this addition to some degree. It's up for debate to what degree. I think there's been an admission that they should, it should have been more, uh, there should have been more communication about it. But either way, like, just don't put us, and I'm not saying this is factually. This is now me thinking of how the conversation might have gone. Don't put us in a pod where it's essentially the old Big 12 because that's not why we left. Our fans wanted this one thing. Don't kick it back to being kind of the same old thing where we're playing three old Big 12 teams every single year. And 
So I could see A&M, and I've talked to people, and it's been my suggestion, that they be in a pod with, say, LSU, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. And then you have probably that logically, just kind of, it would be like Texas, OU, Missouri, Arkansas. I mean, that, and, and those seem pretty balanced, really, if you think mm-hmm. about it. Those seem pretty balanced in terms of pods. Now, it's got to fit with everything else, and that's the hard part, if they even do pods. But here's the catch to that. I think people are misconstruing if A&M was saying, hey, we don't want to be in a pod with them. I think people are misconstruing that as, hey, we don't want to play them every year. It's not the case at all. What they did was every team in the league had to submit, whether it was one team, two teams, three teams, it was basically asked, who do you guys feel like you need to play every season in whatever format it is in this league moving forward? And the obvious one was Texas. And I was asked that question by a couple people. Just, you know, they always, across across the street, will ask me. And they might just throw my advice away or they might listen. Uh, But I've been asked by more than one person, like, hey, what do you think? And I said, I think it's Texas and LSU. And it's it's my understanding that that's exactly what A&M said. And, and, And LSU, I don't think, has to be an every year thing, but if you're going to name a couple, there's a very clear two. Mm -hmm. But Texas was a lay down, no brain. Yeah, we need to play them every year now that they're in the conference. That's A&M's stance. That's the way A&M views it. Um, Anything twisted to the contrary is just, it's made up or it's complete and utter dishonesty to try to make A&M look bad and continue uh, this campaign that they're on in Austin. It's all about what's being put out into the media. It's all about the hype, the fluff, the perception. They're playing the PR game down there right now. That's why they're so desperate. What are you doing this weekend? Baseball. A lot of baseball. A lot of baseball. Do you think you think Zane, do you think it's a coincidence that once he got called big shooter by Slosh and then he comes back with this, as I've dubbed it, the Morgan Walnut haircut? <laughs> Do you think that's a coincidence, or do you think he's just really feeling himself? Wow, I think the head he's coach just... called me big shooter. I'm gonna go get some like you, you know, really swaggy new cut that's that's real trendy on TikTok right now. I think he's uh, feeling himself. I'm gonna himself. do it. Yeah, I think he's I do feeling, too. Yeah, I, I don't think, think there's any doubt. This is a guy that truly believes he's coming into his own. <laughs> all right, like, comment, subscribe. Morgan Walnut. Follow Billy on Twitter and all the social media platforms. Goodbye. <laughs>